this giant. And he will take a simple stone. Fear not, remember the name. Nor be afraid of them. And he will hold it up and they will God. laugh at him. He it is that don't go But the plan is so he will not yet, yet, says the Lord. It could also have been given by me. Come on! They begin to pray. They started praying for the revival. They, they started gathering other prayer warriors with them. Elderly, two ladies, sisters. They started praying. They started praying. And then the Lord had saved a man coming from a dance hall. And he had saved him. And when he saved him, the man became a pastor. So they started praying for revival. They started praying for someone to come in. And this someone came in. And when they came in, it just looked like it was going to be a meeting, just a good meeting. And then all at once, it wasn't enough. And one of the elders walked with the new pastor down the aisle. He said, where are you going with this? Just wait a minute. Walking down the aisle. And then just a lady in the church fell on his knees beside the new pastor and said, started praying out and said, God, you promised us. You promised us it would be a great revival. You promised us it would. And we're holding you to this covenant. They opened the doors to the church. And all of a sudden they sent for the pastor and said, you've got to get down here. He said, while at the dance hall, all the youth were partying, dancing, throwing down, and suddenly they all fell under the conviction of the Holy Ghost, and they're down here. And the great revival called the Hebrides Revival began. And you say, well, what has that got to do with now? Isn't it funny how it ties to now? Because there was a woman there who attended the meetings. She came back later in life and gave and she saw the great miracle, how the revival swept. It went all over the land. It went to every household. It went, it wasn't just in one place, it was in many places in the Hebrides. It was awesome. One of the greatest moves of God ever recorded. Later she would have a son. And she gave him revival from that revival. His name was Donald J. Trump. And she handed him her Bible. And he laid that Bible on top of the other one at the inauguration. And he laid his hand on that Bible from the Hebrides. And was sworn in on that. This is why when you hear, heard him say, we're going to go by this. Every time there was a conflict, he would come and hold a Bible up. Did you notice that? Because of that heritage. And now we're in this time. Do you see anybody holding a Bible up like that right now? No, you see the first man, a fragile man, a chapel set out in the seat of the White House and begin to stand away hundreds of thousands of children. That's what you saw. His best known book is Torches for Christ. His testimony of God's triumph in the middle of communist persecution. Now this was some things from his book that he wrote when he got out. And remember now, he wouldn't deny Jesus as long as he all that time in that communist prison. It says one only has to read Marx's analysis of Hegel to see that Marx was clearly demon-possessed. But Wurmbrandt's is...